Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at my latest iteration of the Red Black Sacrifice archetype, this time updated with the Lost Cameras of Ixlan, and introducing four copies of O'Hare Ashunil Deepest Might. This 4 mana 4 4 legendary god has Trample and says if a red source we control would deal an amount of non combat damage less than O'Hare's power to an opponent, that source deals damage equal to its power instead. So if we deal 1 damage, now it's upgraded to 4 damage, assuming we haven't increased its power. Power somehow, and then if our god dies, it transforms into Temple of Power, a land that can eventually transform back into the creature if we manage to deal four or more non combat damage this turn. So it's not super likely to happen in this deck. So what we're trying to do instead is to repeatedly deal one damage, whether it's with Sunshot Militia or a card like Oni Cult Anvil, which can also ping the opponent for one, and then upgrade that one damage into four damage to quickly close out the game. That gives our deck a lot more reach than your typical sacrifice decks, which can struggle against some life gain effects from the opponent, so that's kind of our game plan going in. And the Sunshot Militia is perfect for this strategy. Two mana, one three, says we can tap two untapped artifacts and our creatures to deal one damage to each opponent, so we'll often have a bunch of random creatures and artifacts, whether it's blood tokens, map tokens, or treasure tokens, that we can tap with a militia in play, and then for each two of those, if we also have our god in play, that means four damage, so it doesn't take many turns to close out the game. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some of the usual suspects. We've got our Blood Token Package with Voldaren Epicure alongside Blood Tithe Harvester, which can also be used as removal. And these both generate two permanents. We can tap with the Militia on just one card, so that's very effective. And then they're also great at setting up our Oni Cold Anvil, which does require an artifact to kind of kickstart it, so we can start draining the opponent while making a Construct tokens, especially nice in multiples, as we'll start going wide and generate an army of Constructs. And then our removal consists of Harvester and Voltage Surge, which can deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker if we sacrifice an artifact, which is also a way to enable the Oni Cult Anvil potentially. And then a Greedy Freebooter is excellent to sacrifice to a Fanatical Offering on turn 2, as we'll not only get to scry 1 and make a treasure token, but then also make a map token and draw 2 cards, so once again generating a lot of random artifacts to synergize with our Militia and Oni Cult Anvil. And then at 3 mana, we've got a pair of Planeswalkers. Chandra can also add mana and deal 1 damage with a plus 1, which can synergize with O'Hare, upgrading it to 4 damage potentially. And then the second plus 1 can be used for card advantage. And then Obnixil's the Adversary has lots of 1-1 creatures we don't mind sacrificing to Casualty, so we get an extra Obnixil's token if that's not legendary. And then the plus can drain the opponent, while the minus 2 generates a Devil token, which can also deal 4 damage if it dies with O'Hare in play, since it's non-combat damage. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Our mana base has a few utility lands, including two creature lands. A Restless Vents can also be used to discard cards and draw. And then uh, the Mirex can generate additional 1 1 artifact tokens, which can then also synergize with a few of our other cards. And then we've got a good amount of mana fixing, as well as the channel lanes. The Crucible making a pair of 1-1s can also pair quite well with a Militia. And then a Bandit Mire to maybe get back some creatures or Planeswalkers from the graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, missing kind of a repeatable damage effect to go with our god. But uh, it's functional for now. Could save Apicure until after we play our god. I think I'll run out one of them for now, so we can also sack an artifact to the Voltage Surge. If I find turn 2 Anvil, I'll want the artifact in play. But can maybe save the second copy. Right, Deep Cavern Bats probably going for Voltage Surge. And then we'll hit for one, play a tabbed Vents and pass. So, not loving my position early on. We're out of interaction, and Mono Black's gonna have answers to our god. Make that Golgari. And now a Glissa. Okay. Obnixilus. Not bad here. Even though we will lose one of them to the Deep Cavern Bats, the Devil can maybe finish it off afterwards. 
And I guess with first strike, if they attack with Glissa, we can actually finish off the bait before regular damage. So we'll see. So they're not going to attack with Glissa? Nope. Yeah, they're thinking twice about it. I don't think they thought about the first strike interaction. So we get our Voltage Surge back. And the Dread Knights as a 3-2 to pressure our Planeswalker. Okay, so I could play Deepest Might. Although if it just gets removed by a go for the throat, we're going to be pretty unhappy about it, I think. So instead, I'm not hating Epicure and then keep up offering in Voltage Surge. So we can chump and maybe take out a creature. And then we'll make a Devil. No one beats me. You work for me now, Runt. Defy me, and you'll lose everything. But we'll see how this plays out. We're better at jumping Glissa than a Dread Knight, but using Voltage Surge on Dread Knight also feels kind of bad. But uh, yeah, keeping Obnixilus around might still be worth it. And then I don't want to sack the Devil yet until after we play our God, so it can potentially deal 4 damage. Or we can again set up something with first strike, but in this case we can only deal one damage, which is not enough. Alright, so we'll start here, cast Offering, and see what we find. Another God and another Voltage Surge. So now I feel better about taking out the Dread Knights. Is going to replay it. We do also have a creature land which might get in at some point, but for now we've got bigger fish to fry. Better triumph discarding Glissa takes care of Obnixilus. And, and then we'll attack for one, I think, even though we could sit back to chump and deal four. We've got Voltage Surge for Glissa now. but expecting them to answer the deepest might. At least it doesn't get exiled, so we still get a land out of it. And there's Dread Knight. So yeah, I'm not hating my spot. Just need to find anything that can synergize with O'Hare. Ideally a Sunshot Militia would go a long way. And speak of the devil. Okay, so play O'Hare, play Militia, and uh, it's not quite lethal, but it's close. I guess never mind, we can attack with the devil, and then if our opponent blocks, that's four more damage, so they have to take it down to one. And uh, at one life, we should be able to figure out a win. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, this time we don't have our anvils, but we still have Freebooter into offering, so sign me up. And that will also generate a little bit of extra mana to maybe ramp out our god ahead of schedule. And only have chance for opponents playing counter spells, I'll just do this now. And a Chandra seems good. And now we've got a backup copy. I'll save my treasure. So not sure yet if our opponents aggro or control. Sea Chrome Coast points more towards an aggro deck. Opponent passes for now. So, could try Chandra, 
And if that resolves, we can make mana play Epicure, or we can save that until after we play our god. But we might need to protect Chandra from some tokens end of turn. Yeah, that seems fine. That resolved instantly. You know what's great at dispelling darkness? A blazing yeah, let's just play Epicure. So now we've got a lot of stuff in play, which we can hopefully uh, leverage into a lot of damage. Fateful Absence on Chandra, it's too bad. But now the coast is clear for O'Hare Ashonil. And the Sunshot Militia combines very well with it too. Okay, so play this, attack for one. Seems fine. And at least if they destroy it, we'll get to transform it into Temple of Power, which will make it easier to deploy our second copy. Probably not gonna transform the Temple of Power back into our god anytime soon. And with a Sunshot Militia in hand, we can deal a ton of damage here. So we're not worried about Wandering Emperor, I guess it could have Aiganjo to deal for damage, so that's a reason to play Militia before attacking. So, sure. That resolves. So tap clue, militia itself. And now we're gonna see response. Tight binder. So, trying to shut down the Militia's ability, but we've got a Voltage Surge. So... That's not gonna be a problem. They did still counter the original activation, but at least it didn't shut down Militia for good. And attack for five. Okay, points at seven. Militia plus O'Hare is essentially lethal. But we'll see if they've got a Sunfall. Wandering Emperor can exile O'Hare. But we've got another one. Although currently lacking the mana to cast it. So... Can maybe start by attacking Emperor with Epicure. Can then sack it to the Offering. And take it from there. Don't really want to sack any of my artifacts if I can help it. And I guess Militia can go face. Alright, so next turn we'll be able to replay it. For now, play Harvester. And activate Militia a bunch. Okay, not bad. Bones back to five. Temporary lockdown, ouch. Wow. Well, that's about as effective as it gets. Into a Sunset Revelry. That's pretty ridiculous. Well, let's try and get back on the board. Did not see that one coming. Union to gain a bunch more life back. Okay, well, let's get back on the board, I guess. Make disappear, sure. Hope they don't have another wandering emperor here. Might be better off using the blood token now. And find another epic here, so that's potentially four damage. Union back up to nine. And a militia, okay, 
Step one, Epicure. I guess their opponent concedes since they don't think they'll survive if they don't have interaction between Epicure and Militia. We've got a ton of damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect, but I'll give it a shot. Start with Epicure, and then turn two can maybe attack for one and activate Militia, tapping the blood token. Now Harvester looks better. Opponent green-white could be enchantments, which is a tough matchup if they get a, a lifelinker going. But at least Harvester gives us a bit of interaction. And there's ossification to deal with Harvester. Could see Calyx next turn, and uh, yeah, we currently don't have a great solution to it. So if I play Militia, attack for one, pink for one. I guess that's okay. And then if we can top deck our god, that would be awesome. Contaminator, interesting. So maybe it's not your typical enchantment deck. Okay, Voltage Surge can be a pretty nice solution. I guess we can empty out our hand. Could also keep something in hand to maybe discard to a Restless Vents. Maybe we don't need Freebooter as much. Yeah, I guess I can buy that, just attack for two, and ping for one. And then next turn the plan is activate Restless Vents. And Loran can destroy one of my blood tokens. And Anvil, an excellent draw. Okay, so let's see. Attack with everyone. Play Anvil, sank the Blood Token, and that's it, versus activate Restless Vents, which does still have a good attack here. Yeah, maybe I can wait. Just attack all out. And Offering would have been nice with the Freebooter, but still have plenty of things to sacrifice. Opponent keeping Haloran instead of trading. And another ossification can deal with Militia. And a wedding announcement. Alright, we got our opponent to 6, so hopefully Anvil can finish the job. So play Anvil, maybe sacking the blood token to the fanatical offering. Could still attack with our Epicures while they trade. Maybe shouldn't have shown them the anvil yet, so they were more likely to take it. Opponent accepts. And activates Loran on the way out. Ooh, Obnixilis is an excellent pickup. Although now we're out of creatures to sack to casualty unless uh, we get the anvil going. Okay, pass it back. And with our opponent at 6 life, Obnixilis will be even more effective. Sadly, a backup Loran was to be expected. Anvil can sack itself for 1 damage. And the Spellbook Vendor can pay 1 to grow Loran. And our opponent gets another 1-1 one -one token. Ooh, nice. O'Hare Ashenil. Sadly, without Anvil and Sunshot Militia, the Devils from Obnixilus can still synergize with it. So do I run it out right now? Or maybe go for Obnixilus first? Can play Harvester, play Obnixilus, sacking the 1-1. One -one. And then Harvester wouldn't be able to answer anything the opponent controls other than a 1-1 one -one token once they transform Wedding Announcement. So it could also just sack the Harvester itself, but I guess it does trade for some of their creatures right now. Which might be good enough. Also have to consider whether we keep 
a land in hand or maybe discard it with either blood token or restless vents. But this looks okay. Pwn is empty handed, so Nixos is guaranteed to deal two damage. So we could just plus both of them. Put our opponent to one, and then we just need one of Nixilis to uh, survive to maybe get it done, forcing the opponent to discard, making a token and then plussing also reasonable. Now we've got a bit more loyalty, but less of a board presence. Although if they found removal for Harvester, we could lose both Planeswalkers. Steel Seraph, ouch. Well, that's uh, pretty significant here. Being able to give lifelink to some of their creatures. As well as flying. So that might swing the game back in the opponent's favor. So we're gonna lose Obnixilis no matter what. Opponent will be at 4 life. But I have the option of trading Harvester for Vendor. Yeah, it's not like Harvester can take out Steel Seraph. I just need to find another repeatable 1 damage effect to try and take over. But I guess we'll trade for Vendor. Got a few top decks that win us the game. Epicure, Sunshot Militia, Anvil, Freebooters, not one of them. So next turn opponent can gain 4 life at least. Obnixilis may as well make a Devil. And then I guess we can go digging with both Map Token and Blood Token. And we can use the blood token end of turn. And Loran draws. And finds Voltage Surge, okay. So now we want to put some stops to take out Steel Seraph before it triggers. So that was lucky. So no life gain for them. They can't attack into the Devil for as long as we control the Deepest Might. But they had another ossification. So can't really save Omnixilis. I guess we'll take the trade for their token. So the game goes on. Can put our creature lines to use. And then still play Harvester. Epicure, yeah, that would have been lethal a few turns ago. But we'll still put our opponent to one, facing multiple lethal threats, including within our mana base. So still liking my chances, but you never know, another Steel Seraph could swing the game back around. Our opponent's probably holding some lands in case we find another Obnixilis, so they have something to discard. But uh, that's not their only concern. They might be thinking what outs they have left and whether they need to draw with Loran. 
Militia is also lethal. And now Steel Seraph is no longer an out. They did have the Sunfall. But we've got two Blood Tokens to synergize with the Militia. As well as the Restless Vents, which can still attack for two. Does have Menace, so it gets past Incubator. And Return Triumphant, getting Contaminator back is not going to save them. Vents is lethal before we even show them the Militia. Well, that was a pretty epic game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Bit land heavy, but uh, we'll get to see quite a few cards between the Scry and the draw two. And then we'll have a treasure to synergize with Oni Cult Anvil. So happy to draw our god, happy to maybe find some Planeswalkers. Facing red aggro. Alright, so we're going to be on the back foot. Could keep up Voltage Surge. I think the curve of Freebooter into Offering is still too tempting here. And then maybe keep Voltage Surge to deal with one of their more impactful 3 mana creatures. Take 3, and then next turn we can jump and Sacrifice. And there's Godric, so that's a good target for Voltage Surge. And then do we want an Epicure? It does make an artifact for Anvil. I can play it alongside Anvil, but I'm more likely to want a Voltage Surge. So I think we can get rid of it. And then I'll take my turn. Harvester's not bad either. So I've got a few options. Getting the Anvil going seems decent. So I could go Anvil and then either just play Harvester sacking the treasure will make a 1-1. One, one. But then I'm shields down on Voltage Surge. Could also just play Harvester and then keep up Voltage Surge or Fanatical Offering. So, not a simple turn. I think I should just try and protect my life total at all costs, which means I think Harvester, keep up Voltage Surge. Try and uh, trade resources as much as possible. So this will enable their uh, celebration. So I should probably... Go for Voltage Surge now, although I guess if they have Monstrous Rage, they would still celebrate and then get Godric up to 5 toughness. So I may as well wait then. And see what else they do. And then wait for them to activate Godric for the Fire Breathing ability. I see Play with Fire takes out Harvester. At least we can safely deal with Godric. And then want to keep the treasure and... I assume the map token's better than the blood token now. Well, that's hard to say. We are light on creatures, but getting a 1-1 one, one from Anvil up to a 2-2 two, two with a map token could be relevant. Still take 5, so not loving my position. Now double Anvil's an improvement. So I imagine I just activate one, sacking the map, keeping the treasure. We'll get two 1-1s, one which can try and uh, trade. And if something bad happens, I can still activate the other anvil. Kumano is acceptable at this stage. Hope they don't have a trick. Right, so we take three. And so that's a good top deck. So the Deepest Might. Still have Fanatical Offering available. So let's see. Yeah, I can play this. Yeah, sequencing here is kind of interesting. I can just activate Anvil, sacking the treasure token. 
and then pass and have another anvil activation at the ready. I don't think offering comes into play here. So this now deals four damage. So next turn we can conceivably end the game already. Lightning Strang goes upstairs. So we're dead to another burn spell potentially. Now I can block Scoundrel without killing it so the Wicked Roll doesn't go off. But this Phoenix Chick attack is pretty ominous. I guess I'll use Anvil now. So they don't get me with uh, play with fire and response. We're at three, that to a lightning strike. And that's a lightning strike. Well, we got very close on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty mediocre hand, but starting freebooter into offerings, all right. So I'll give it a shot. And then we've got a creature land to maybe discard more lands we draw in the future. And if turn will sacrifice. And then now we've got a treasure to go with Oni Cult Anvil as well. Chandra is reasonable against black white. They can certainly have some planeswalker removal, but it's less likely than creature removal. Even if we have to wait another turn to deploy our planeswalker. I think for now go anvil. And then tapped vents. Problem is, if I now sack the map token, our opponent likely takes out my 1-1. One, one. How much do we care? Yeah, we might run low on artifacts. So I think we actually wait. Still nothing from our opponents. And then now we can go Chandra plus Militia. And then now since we're putting a bunch of creatures in play and Planeswalkers, I feel better about potentially sacrificing something to the Anvil here. We can also use Militia first. I guess we'll just use Militia. Edict deals with our Planeswalker. Making a 1-1 token also wouldn't have helped against the Shieldrest Edict specifically, since they can just sacrifice a non-token, which gets around our 1-1. And now Wandering Emperor, nice answer to the Militia. But we do have a Voltage Surge. And there's another Militia. Does not damage Planeswalkers. Do also have a Restless Vents we could fire up if we really want to. Yeah, maybe that's a better use of our resources. And then we can play Freebooter using the treasure, which also enables Anvil. Okay. And now, don't want to animate Restless Vents, so we'll probably just uh, send in the 1-1s. One if her opponent wants to block with Fortress, we've got a Voltage Surge at the ready. And then we can play Militia afterwards. Uh, 
Oh, it's going to be Wandering Emperor, likely making a 2-2 token. Finally, I'm home. So I've got a few options here. Including Voltage Surge, the token before Blockers, and then Voltage Surge, Wandering Emperor. Yeah, that might be the way to go, even though we have to use two removal spells. And then we'll run out the Militia, and then we might get hit by Sunfall next turn, which will be unfortunate. Yeah, suppose we don't use Anvil now, so that if they do have a Sunfall we can at least sack the Construct to drain for one and reduce the size of the Incubator. Gonna be a bitter triumph, paying three life, okay. It's not too bad. But it feels like we need a good top deck here. If our opponent has another Wandering Emperor, we don't have a great solution, so maybe it's time to stop attacking and just start activating Militia. And then I feel like if they had a sweeper, they would have cast it last turn. So let's see, use blood token and map token. So if they have another emperor, I guess they would wait until end of turn to exile it. It's going to be a march for three, gaining three. Fair enough. So that happens. Can still attack for two at least. And then I'll just sack the 1-1 one, one and make a replacement, keep our author artifacts in case we do see a top decked sweeper. And there we go. O'Hare, Ashonil. Right on time, hopefully. And then we want to wait to activate Anvil until our opponent tries to take out our god. Which is now discarding Kaya, so that's good value. And then I'll sack probably a map token now. That transforms, and we still attack for three for the win. Sweet, so a nice grindy game against Black White. Getting to see the finale with our god. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's pretty mediocre, missing an artifact to kickstart our anvil. So, I think this is a mulligan. Alright, this is a little bit better. And then Freebooter is missing a sacrifice effect. So I'll get rid of it, and then uh, Harvester into Deepest Might on 4. Hopefully find some 1 damage effects in the meantime. Alright, there's a Militia, that's nice. So now we just need one more land. Opponent on Humans. And a Catilda. Does have protection from werewolves, not vampires, luckily. That's the other Catilda. And uh, yeah, we can play Militia. And then still Voltage Surge. Could keep the Voltage Surge for later instead of using Harvester. And then keep more permanence in play for Militia, basically. Yeah, that seems fine. And then we can attack for three. And then activate Militia for one more damage. And then next turn. And with our god we can deal 8 damage basically on the spot. So that's a 2 turn clock. 
A loyal bodyguard's fine. And then Mirex can also pump out more artifacts to synergize with the militia. So this is our game plan coming together against a deck that doesn't seem to have a ton of interaction for our creatures. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, next turn on tap, and that's eight more damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Opponent on an aggressive blue-white deck. We've got a good setup to deal a ton of damage with our Militia here. And a Duelist, so it is a Poison deck. Maybe they've got some Auras to enhance their creatures as well. So Voltage Surge is potential removal. I think we just pass. If our opponent activates Skrelv to give Pro Red, we can maybe respond with Voltage Surge. If not, I'm happy to chump and Offering. That resolves. Opponent passes. So going for vents plus maybe the militia. And then next turn we can already start dealing a lot of damage. And for now deal one. Militia technically lines up well as a blocker but can expect some pump spells or other interaction. Charge of Might making a pair 1-1 one, one. Might tokens with Toxic 1. And now Sentry, a good answer for the Militia. Alright, so we're taking 4 poison at least. Opponent sends in Skrelv as well. They're probably better off activating Skrelv on the Duelists, because that would give it Toxic 1, which with the Double Strike gets doubled, so they would have dealt one more poison damage. So now the coast is clear for Voltage Surge. Can take out Sentry, get our Militia back. But yeah, we're still kind of in trouble here. But I think that's step one. Sacking an Artifact, and I should play Anvil first. And then play tapped vents. And then I could activate militia. So we have two blockers now, including a colorless one, which is good against Skrelv. But if they have another sentry, we could just be dead. Fading hope, also pretty effective. And another duelist. Okay, so I have to block the Duelist, otherwise we die. So, this is not looking good. We can finally deploy our god with Anvil, but don't have the Militia to really go off. So that's gonna be it, sadly. A Sweeper would have been pretty nice here. Yeah, opponent just tempoed us out. We needed one extra turn to really get a foothold in the game. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Turn one freebooter, turn two, we've got a couple options. Probably gonna start with Harvester just to apply a bit more pressure. Could even offering to sacrifice Freebooter, give us some extra mana. Against the blue black, I guess if her opponent does have a counter spell, it would be nice to get the anvil in play. 
but I'm gonna stand by my original decision. And if our opponent has like a deep cavern bant, we can still Voltage Surge to get our card back. If they take Voltage Surge, I don't really care. It's gonna be a Dream Thief, so maybe an Asper Fairies deck. So you can certainly expect Rafine. And there we see Denik also plays well in the Asper Legends archetype. Cut down for Harvester. Okay, so... Can attack with Freebooter. I assume our opponent takes it. And then we can still maybe offering Freebooter play Anvil, or just play Anvil and pass. Yeah, I guess we can wait on the offering. And then for now just sacrifice Blood Token. So if Rafine shows up, I wouldn't be able to take it out because of Ward. But I can do so next turn. Okay, opponent's got the bat. So in that case, we'll just take it out. And then next turn we can go digging with Fanatical Offering, hopefully finding our god. Opponent's gonna cut down our only artifact to try and shut down Anvil. But with Offering, we can get it going once again. And then do we want a Militia? It's okay, not amazing on this board, since we're not going incredibly wide. And I would rather find our god or more interaction. Okay, Chandra's not bad. So we can play Chandra by sacking a treasure. We also trigger Anvil. Add mana, play Epicure. And we're in a great position to leverage O'Hare Ashonil. If we can find him between Chandra and Anvil, we've got a damage rolled up on Dorothea. That's fine. Might be able to take out Chandra next turn. Alright, so probably have to go digging with a second plus one. Could also try and use our blood token. Maybe start there, use Blood Token. If we draw into our god, we can still play it after making mana. Even though we won't get to 4 damage out of Chandra. Find another Anvil. So now if I go for the second plus and we exile our 4 mana card, we won't be able to play it anymore. But, uh... Yeah, I guess we'll get to 1 damage. Play another Anvil. And then by sacking the map we still trigger Anvil. Find Mirex. Okay. And then if Dorothea blocks, they have to sacrifice it, so I'm okay attacking into it. And at this point we're just trying to go wide. Now if we find Militia, it's going to be pretty great. Also would have been reasonable to hold on to the Mirex. In case your opponent plays another Bant, they wouldn't be able to take it anyway. Alright, Danik to try and gain some life back. Now we can still attack with our artifact creatures and then sacrifice whichever one they block. But we will lose Chandra. Okay, so all the artifact tokens can attack. This way they don't gain any life. And then I'll keep land in hand now. If we find a blood token we can maybe discard it. And if Danik were to attack, we can also block and potentially sacrifice. 
Okay, now a 4-4 flying a lifelink is a bit of a concern. And then it attacks. Nope, or he considers. Question is, do I activate Anvil? May as well just attack. And find another Anvil. Alright, that might do it here. So play Anvil. Attack with all our artifact creatures. Which will get at least two damage in. So we can put our opponent to two. Opponent attacks. And then we can jump Danik. Activate Mirex to make another Might. Opponent will be at 6. Possible they have more interaction in the form of a channel land. But nope, opponent explodes. Triple Anvil gets it done. Alright, so we go to see our red-black sacrifice deck in action. I don't think it's quite competitive enough to be a main contender on the ranked ladder right now. Still a little bit too slow against those good draws from Mono Red Aggro, and it's still going to be an underdog against the domain kind of rampy control decks and in general also needs to draw the right half of the deck. If you draw too many of the same effects without necessarily bridging the gap, then uh, the deck's not really going to come together, so it does have a little bit of awkwardness there. But in general, I've been having a good time playing it, and if you enjoy dealing damage repeatedly, then upgrading one damage into four damage can be quite satisfying. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.